should be much better. I have but two they don't, of yesterday. They don't. That's the thing is they don't look that much better than Anarchy, which is weird. But anyway, Spenu versus CJ game number two. Spenu over on the blue side this time around with Vivid in his support. And there's Cassiopeia ban against Coco. So that's going to go away again. Will they ban the Gragas this time now that they're on blue side, or are they going to try and take away the Azir? Hmm. The Azir pick is really something you don't uh. want them to have in vain. The ban against Space. Space has a really broad champion pool right now, though. He's one of the better Urgot players. He's a really good Sivir player. Yeah. And Gragas will be unable to be first picked by Catch in this game. It's like when all the really good players went to China from Korea, they had, like, this like secret magical stuff and they're like we're passing this on to you gbm in space you must become the new best players in korea we're giving you the power now there was only so much magic kimchi and they were eating it all but now the magic kimchi has been spread i suppose a little bit for everyone a little bit for everybody so there's right. the azir ban as expected lulu Sichuani maokai the bans for cj in the first game so they have to Consider which of those champions they still consider a major threat here, if any. I would say the Maokai or the Lulu are more threatening, and it's actually going to be a LeBlanc ban. Okay. Well, first pick Maokai would be pretty interesting. I don't think we're going to see the Aureli again. I think you'd take a jungler here. And the Rek'Sai may be picked up. No, no, no. Okay. That's okay, maybe. Uh, they, Urgot's okay. Space has played a lot of Urgot lately. Yeah. And it's more of a defensive pick that prevents some of the dives that CJ Antis was executing in the last game to very quickly close it out. Yeah. But you'll have to have some sort of mid with decent wave clear or else CJ is just going to push you in. I think they'll probably take Rek'Sai first. I think they'll take Zack for sure. Lock it in. Zack attack. Oh, Sejuani it will be. So now that it is unbanned, Catch feeling very confident on that pick, which probably means a Maokai for Shy in the top lane and a Rek'Sai or a Thresh taken here. I wonder if we're going to see CJ kind of try to style on Spenu a little bit here in game number two. Well, Ambition doesn't really look very excited about this game. Ambition doesn't really look very excited about anything anytime, Monty. <laughs> That's true. Yep. Ambition kind of how has this like look of like superiority basically. He's like above. See, look at this yawning. He's like, uh, I'm above this petty Spenu team. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to highlight Rise this game. Rise, a champion that has seen some play in the LPL. I don't think that Rise is particularly good right now, but I think that he's just so weak and vulnerable in the laning phase, and he. He, he telegraphs so much because you know when he's going to come in and trade based on his stacks that he's a bit of a risk. Yeah. Yeah, you really do have a pretty big visual indicator telling you exactly when Ryze is going to make moves. So. I'm not a big fan. And no. that means if there's a jungler in your lane, you either don't trade in that situation and therefore lose your ability to trade over, until you start casting a few more spells. Or you walk up and then the jungler is all of a sudden all over you and yeah. I'm, I'm just not a fan. So Rumble and Sivir will be the decisions here. So CJ just going to go for some more dive potential again. It would go great with the Bard, I'm just saying. Mad Life wants to pick the Bard. I would love that. Why don't you just wait for our next best of three, Doa, when Sweet gets Bard banned against him every game? Because that doesn't help me see Bard now, does it? No, nope. it's just going to be a ban. Maybe you should have been casting on Thursday then. I guess so. Mistakes were made. <laughs> Alistar and Jinx, the two pickups for Spenu Sonic Boom. Yeah, pretty standard stuff here. So they're just setting up a lot of protection for Jinx at the moment. This probably means that, that, that Spenu is going to take the Lulu at some point in this draft if Coco doesn't. Ambition worshiping a Morton Joe right now. Witness he, me, brother. I think he's just making a giant heart with his heads. Maybe. With his with his, his head heads? in it. With his heads. His head <laughs> in his hands. You got it out. You got it out eventually. I did it. <laughs> well, hey, Bard's being hovered over right now. Come on. Come on. Lock it in. Lock it in. What's wrong? Just lock it in. Nothing wrong with locking in that Bard. Just lock that Bard right in there. Oh, 
Not gonna happen. Gonna go for the disengage support instead, Doa. Yep. Hate to Hooray. disappoint you. It's Mad Life will not be playing part. There is Nunu one more time for Ambition, looking for that control. A lot of safety right here. What are they gonna pick for a mid laner? I, I wonder if it's Jace. I actually wonder if it's Jace too. That actually could be it. With the Janna pick makes me believe that it is Jace. Well, Janna, <laughs> Janna and Nunu, both of these things can work well with Jace. And I mean, what else are you gonna take that, you know, it, auto attacks, like what, Thrash? No. It, it could be Ezreal, because Coco uh, has played yeah. a lot of mid lane Ezreal in the past season. He's also played Jace, though. Yes, he has. He's known as a Jace guy. Well, so. he, played, he did play a lot of Ezreal as well. So, yeah. are they going to go for a blind pick Fizz in the mid lane? This would be highly not recommended. Especially if CJ tries a double AD comp, they're going to have no wave clear. They still really don't have any wave clear. Yeah, picking the Vlad and the Maokai instead. And so will it be the Jace for CJ or do they have something else in mind? Ezreal, yep. Also a very reasonable pickup if they are going double AD indeed. What about Varus? Could happen. I think is yeah. just a better Varus, basically, <laughs> but... Can't, it's hard to argue with that right now. Obviously, there are differences between the two champions in terms of setting up team fights. You have that hard CC engage, yeah. which is really nice. But I just think Ezreal is so much safer. Ooh. But maybe he will go for the Varus. Obviously, a lot of choices to be made right here. Interesting. I feel like, though, you don't really need the Varus ultimate if you've got Sivir helping your team engage. So I kind of do like the Ezreal right. a little bit more. But it is going to be Varus. All right. That's going to be really effective against Vlad. Yeah, that is true. It certainly will be. Vlad is going to have a lot of problems in this lane, mm -hmm. uh, just because, uh, especially in the first few levels, he's just not going to be able to out-trade the Varus. And the Hail of Arrows, if he gets it on Vlad to slow him down, it gives the Grievous Wounds effect, so he yeah. cannot transfuse while the Hail of Arrows is on him. That's a good counter pick. Yeah. The nice thing about Varus compared to Ezreal is that his Q goes through minions instead of just stopping at the first one, like Mystic Shot does. But you are more vulnerable. However, yeah. against Sejuani, who doesn't have that much early ganking power, this and especially Sejuani Vladimir is not really going to kill you, especially if you have heal. Yeah, it's not a dangerous lane. Yeah, no, no crowd control from Vladimir to set that up besides pool. Looks like he's going to go cleanse, though. Interesting. Just, I guess, so worried about the Sejuani ult yeah. or the Twisted Advance in the late game. Yeah, I think so. I think that is the reason. So, we will see if CJ can get the 2-0 here. Probably, but it's interesting that we're seeing some newer picks here. Coco playing the Varus, I believe, probably for the first time professionally. Yeah, oh, should certainly. be. Yeah. And so, can Spenu Sonic Boom tie it up, or will CJ get the 2-0? I think it's time, guys, to get into the game and find out. on Faker's face kind of said, oh, now you're picking Varus too? I see how it is. Well, both both Coco and Faker are known for playing ranged AD mid laners. Yeah. It's not too surprising. Well, Faker's kind of known for playing everything. That's also true. So, so I think that the big tell in this game, I'm actually surprised they picked Vladimir if they could have played something like Ziggs. And we know that Zacin can play Lulu. I think that would have been better. Hmm. Because almost certainly at that stage, you see the Janna in this meta, and you see the Nunu, and you're like, this is probably double AD. Yeah. What I like about this composition better than I liked about SKTs, where they ran Nunu top lane, is that they actually have AP damage here. So I think this is a much better version of that comp. Uh, they have strong engage with the equalizer set up into the chain of corruption, and then they can be all over you in an instant with the Sivir ult, so really good engage. Uh, they have good peel as well. This is a well-balanced comp that should do well against this Vladimir in the mid lane, as long as this Varus doesn't get ganked while he's trying to stack his tier. Yeah, well, I'd imagine he's gonna stay fairly safe. Yeah, there's just very little kill pressure. Yeah. 
unless the Alistair or the Maokai decide to wander on in. Deep Ward's coming. They will spot Soul on his way up to the top side. Soul not looking like he wants to take a jungle camp early, and both dual lanes leashing for their junglers on bottom side. So we have mirror jungling going on, and that'll be a Hail of Arrows start. Space gets the Gromp, actually. Mm, okay. And again, at level one, this Jinx Sivir matchup is difficult for Sivir just due to the range. And mm. the fact you can just switch into rocket form and just endlessly shoot her. Right. Yeah, but Coco should have a pretty easy time in lane against this Vladimir. Right. And the, pro the problem with Vladimir, too, is that if the siege comes in, before Vladimir has three or four points in his E. So we're talking, you know, level 12-ish. Then there's not really gonna be anything from stopping the double A decomposition from just mercilessly sieging. Yeah, and look at that. Lots of damage done already. And you saw he picked up that mana pot too, because if you start Hail of Arrows, that's gonna use up your mana really quick if you're harassing with that consistently. Yeah, it will. and. You see that Sasan doesn't have a whole lot of choices about when he can use Transfuse as a result of the Hail of Arrows, too. He's not going to be able to use it off cooldown every time. Yep, just a good little adaptation by Coco against the Vlad. And he's got a nice little CS lead already. A little bit of damage on the turret. Yeah, wow, that's a lot of harass. <laughs> it's a lot, very, a lot of harass. Very annoying. Yep, meanwhile, Mad Life and Space have actually managed to push back Vivid and nuclear down in bot lane well they should have had to see the experience advantage after hitting level two faster we don't see those gromp takes mm -hmm. so much any any longer but this time they decided to go for it due to the sustain of this new new in the jungle and now nuclear having a really hard time csing they're not even level three yet yeah look at this i mean does the siege even need to happen if you're fast pushing this hard with your bottom and mid i'm not sure what happened in this bottom <laughs> lane but mistakes were made no kidding in order to get that big of a cs lead right at four minutes and start really putting the damage onto the tower and this composition is going to snowball wildly out of control if they can get that much of an edge early because of how long Spenu's comp has to take to ramp up. Jinx, Vlad, Maokai, Sejuani. This is not a composition that's going to be effective in the early game. So yeah. if they leave, leave so many objectives getting cut down in the laning phase, then there's uh, very little hope that they're going to be able to come back or even hold. Well, CJ did seem to win the pick ban pretty hard, but you know, with that Vladimir pick, you know, I mean, do you think they were expecting the Ezreal? Oh, Sasan getting very low. Catch coming in, though, to save his life. Ambition, he could probably just go in for a snowball, actually. If he was feeling it very aggressive. And he is. Snowball. For a turret hit. Yeah. Worth. He can just consume something. It's okay. Nuclear's starting to catch up a little bit in this bot lane. Now the, uh, now the push kind of switching sides. Wow, they're holding catch in the mid lane too. Yeah. So they're keeping eyes on him at all times, which allows everyone else to play more aggressively. Ambition just to go and relentlessly counter jungle. Shy just playing safely right here. And normally there would be kill pressure on a Shy in the Maokai versus Rumble lane, but this game, just due to the fact that catch is totally under control, there's nothing at all. And now Ambition took his entire jungle. Wow. There's nothing on either side of his jungle to take. Wow, you're right. There's actually nothing. That hurts. And now Ambition going to go up into top lane here to make a play onto Soul. Soul Twist advancing in. Doesn't need to use his flash because of that. Nice escape. Meanwhile, some action down in the bot lane. Vivid looks like he's trying to make a play. There's a pulverized space getting a little bit low. Nuclear is as well. Which AD carry is going to go down first? Looks like neither one. And no barely make summoners it out. used either, so yeah. very patient play in the lane not to blow any of those abilities. Space trying to heal up right now, but of course Vivid with the Alistair will have the advantage on that front with the sustain. Yep. And nuclear looking a little bit better off after that one. 
health-wise. Space still, of course, a little bit ahead in CS. Yeah, Coco has certainly been winning this mid lane pretty hard. Well, as, as to be expected, there's yeah. not really anything Vlad can do against this early on. It, it's pretty devastating, and Sasset is also going to have to build a Seeker's Arm Guard first just to deal with it, which delays his sustain even more. He's not going to be able to go directly into a Hextech Revolver. So that makes Vlad pretty useless for a long time, up until he gets another core item. You know, he needs both the Woda and the Zonia's Hourglass to be really a threat. Well, I'm sure CJ doesn't mind that. Fire. Nice. A little extra damage while he can get it. Ambition just showing himself in lane, trying to drive them off, make sure that his lanes can push out minion waves and can continue to move forward on the map, play more aggressively. But he will get seen at the blue buff. Coco wants to go pick that one up, of course. Nice CSing too. Tier. Even harder. Yep, and that blue buff will be pretty nice. There he gets it. So, all of the lanes right now, except for Shy winning, but Shy is barely behind anyway, so no big deal there. Why does Coco's bow need four different, he's got like two bows crossed together. I don't know, more uh, shooting power? I'm pretty sure a bow like that has never been invented because it's actually impossible to use. What if the arrow goes through a circle in the middle of all four? I, like I said, I'm pretty sure there are some like siege weapons that look like that, but I don't think that's something you can actually physically hold. No kidding. It would be really hard to pull back. It'd have to be pretty strong to uh, <laughs> pull back a bow with two strings crossed like that. Unless it was of the compound variety, I suppose, but it'd be very complicated. I wouldn't want to use it. I wouldn't want to use it either. Well. A quiet early game from CJ, but they really just want to hit a Siege Power Spike here like we saw from SK Telecom. And Sol, uh, we'll see what he itemizes. One of the big problems when Najin was fighting against the Varus mid in the double AD with the Nunu is that he just itemized three MR items and no armor, and then they tried to fight at this mid-game dragon, which was just a disaster because he wasn't tanky at all yeah. on his Gnar in order to deal with it. Well, CJ going after the dragon here, and I'd imagine it should be pretty easy to take. Maybe I spoke too soon, though, Matt Life having to use his flash space, popping that ultimate. Meanwhile, they're trying to pre prevent this dragon. Catch does get it, though. Mad Life uses his ultimate. Absolute zero comes in from Ambition. Coco doing a lot of damage here, but they need to be careful because that Sejuani ult. There it is. Hemo Plague goes down as well. And Spenu pushing back CJ here. Sasan a bit low though. Space comes in to try to get the kill, but the pool is going to turn it around. First Blood actually going over to Vivid here. Nuclear gets another one as well. Shy coming in to turn things around. He's going to try anyway, but that's a double kill for Nuclear. And look at that. Spenu, Coco trying to get the kill. Can't do it against Catch. Wow. And they ace them. So Spenu gets a dragon and aces CJ at the cost of only sauce, and that was not supposed to happen. So CJ wow. can't skirmish with this composition. They're fundamentally a poke comp. And so when Madlife and Space got caught out and intercepted in that 2v2, they couldn't set up their poke properly. And if we look at this, catch comes in from the side, Madlife uses that monsoon. The equalizer doesn't do anything right here. And while the Absolute zero goes off. It's just CCing tanks in the pit. So Sasan gets a three man or two man rather Hemo Plague on the backside, able just to run up. And the, they have to start by poking because this Varus isn't useful if he's not actually poking in these in these early engagements. He doesn't have very much damage yet. He just has a tear. Oh, Coco. <laughs> Didn't know that catch was there. He knows now. Well, a lot of kills going on to this Jinx. That's exactly what Spenu needs. Yeah, pretty much. And so now we've got a lead for Spenu after all that. And look at this too. Sasan is actually able to build the Woda now, just holding on to that cloth armor because he actually did get some money to work with. Uh, he's sort of paying for it, actually. I guess CJ actually got that dragon too. I thought I saw a catch taken. No, uh, CJ got it. I guess I was it. wrong. 
but it came at great cost. Indeed. Well, trying to defend this pink ward, and it looks like they will for now. So what does CJ do from here on out? I suppose they just need to kind of go back to what they were doing, which is to just poke and try to keep winning lanes, and it's not going to be as easy, but it should still be able to do it. Look at what Sol is doing, though. He's got that early Righteous Glory, deciding to go for that item immediately after getting the Catalyst. And that means he's going to be able to teleport flank into the back lines with some ease. And as long as he can lock down the Varus, they'll be in good position. True. But CJ needs to focus on just grouping up his five and then kiting with their... Oh, Coco. Oh, he like missed. Used. I don't think he's going to get it. Yep, Sasin picks up that kill. Ambition coming in to try to help out his mid laner, but that may have been an error. Vivid, nice headbutt. Knox Ambition in there. Ambition can't quite get Sasin. He got out of the absolute zero. Another kill onto Sasin, and CJ kind of falling apart a little bit here. They might get this bottom turret, but man, things the decisions have not been stellar here. Well. It's also what happens when you play this Varus. It's risky. Yeah. There's there's a lot of ways to die in the early game because not only do you have low mobility, you're trying to build tier first, which is why generally I think that Ezreal is better. Uh, I think Varus has a higher upside in the mid game. Obviously, he, he spikes extremely hard in the mid game, but it's harder to get him there. Yeah. Whereas with Ezreal, if you have that tier, at least you've got the arcane shift to get out of some of these situations. I mean, Coco kind of got... You have long-range wave clear with your ultimate. Yeah, I mean, Coco kind of got baited into that 1v1 too with no wards really on the bottom side of his jungle to let him know where anyone was. Well, you have to expect that though. That's yep. part so of the situation. Was... And now Sasin going to be doing even better. Picked up his Woda, now has the arm guard also. This is a great place for Vladimir to be this early in the game. So CJ has a lot to work on right now because they need to hit a power spike or they're going to fall off in the late game. And this Vladimir will simply be able to sustain through all their damage. They've got two big tanks in Maokai and Sejuani as well. Yep. It's kind of Samsung's game to lose at this point, it seems like. Spenu. Spenus, Spenus, whatever. SSB, SSG. <laughs> it's a confusing acronym. Okay. Well, just more farming, at least at the moment, but this isn't what Coco wanted. They have to keep putting the pressure on and chip these turrets, but now that Sasin was able to get that Woda, that poke not going to need, mean as much to him, considering the speed at which he can heal up with his spell vamp, and look at this. CJ losing their towers. This is a disaster too, because yeah. now you have to try and siege with this Righteous Glory Maokai that can TP behind you. That's not probably going to be that effective. They're going to be able to put this Jinx in the mid lane. And the Vlad should be able to perfectly, to split push perfectly fine at the moment with the well, item advantage that they have. So Jinx could just walk into mid. You see what happens to Siege Tanks that can't Siege, and it's pretty much this. Ambition flashing away, can't do anything there. Knock up onto Nuclear, Chains of Corruption wow. used. They only catch catch though. Space coming in with a bit of damage. Nice equalizer comes out for Shy. Can CJ turn this one around? Two kills already, one for each side. And so far, Spenu looking like they're gonna come out on top of this one. They get that second kill. Sasin taking a turret hit. Nuclear had a great flash right there just to yeah. get himself out of the choke and firing in rockets from the outside. And that made that fight Pretty easy to go in favor of Spenu now. The pool dodging the whirlwind, but they do have enough wave clear there that it's going to be hard for Spenu to keep sieging. They want to use this time just to go back and buy, so they have a few more items to work with right here. A lot of gold for nuclear at the moment. Three, zero, and four. Man, that is a very fed jinx at 16 minutes. Yeah, CJ is quickly kind of running out of opportunities here to win this game. And just a lack of patience, and I think a little bit of disrespect from CJ too. The, the dragon fight, there's a way you fight with this composition, and that is grouping and kiting, and instead they got into this little skirmish, which would have worked great with the composition that they had in the last game, but not so well with this one. Yeah. You have a vein, you can pull off tricks like that. You have a mid Varus, no. <laughs> Well, it's interesting. 
I mean, it's I, I do like that this season it seems like the even the bottom four teams are still good enough that they need to be taken seriously by the top four. Yeah, I agree. It's much more competitive yeah. this season. Wow, Shy did a great job of knocking Soul off the tower right there. So Soul stayed too long in the mid lane, didn't have TP, and there was a massive minion wave that was pushed into topside by Shy, and then he harassed Soul, so Soul had to take an even longer path to get up in top, and he lost a lot of CS as a result. Yeah, in the meantime, Spenu was able to take that dragon, and so that'll be their first of the game. The poke hasn't started to do that much yet for Coco, but once he hits a few more items, he'll be doing a lot of damage. Well, he's pretty far behind right now, and yeah. at this stage, if you're behind on the Varus, you never really catch up, because they're going to start stacking that armor, and you're going to be in trouble. Lots of magic penetration for Shy, though, flat magic penetration, so he's trying to use the fact that Spenu will be stacking armor early with very little MR and trying to deal as close to true damage as he can. Yeah, makes sense. And CJ trying to see just mid lane turret a little bit. Jinxies to not be doing Krugs right now. That's not a good use of Jinx's time at the moment. Well, still CJ unable to take that mid lane despite the AD carry not being around for Spenu. But if you just have Vlad to clear the waves, you have to wait until the wave hits the turret, and then they get free autos on the turret with the Varus and the Sivir. So you can't do that. Righteous Glory. Oh, here we go. Ult onto Shy only. Can CJ turn this one around? Shy getting very low. Nice zoning by Ambition here. Coco still okay. Doing a decent amount of damage. Mad Life in space relatively untouched so far. So the engage for Spenu takes out Shy. But CJ, I don't know if they can get anything more out of this. They're chasing down. They really want to get a kill onto Soul, but he's so tanky right now, yeah. Can't get it. So they lose their top laner and don't really get anything in return. Well, they still have the pressure on the mid lane because Coco and Space are untouched right here. Nuclear's there, but he's starting to run out of mana. Yeah. There's a smite coming down just to keep the wave off the tower. They've got to hold out until Maokai can get back in lane. Glory will be back up soon. So CJ has to take caution. And everyone looks like they're just going to recall now that Soul's back. Coco doesn't know the word caution. Maybe he does. So nice pick there, but no real results for Spenno beyond the kill itself. Uh, is he going to go back and... Oop, bye. <laughs> What's he hooking that to? There's actually a roof over Summoner's Rift. It's a domed stadium. I don't know if you knew this. I think uh, he's hooking it to that Elise that died in that one season <laughs> and went up and never came back down. She's still up there somewhere. There's a dead spider in the rafters, <laughs> and you grapple into her corpse. That's very morbid, Noah. Hey, we haven't seen Elise for a long time. I'm just kind of uh, exploring the options. <laughs> she never did. Some say she's still up there. Getting her corpse grappled into. Yep. And by some, we mean you. For Carapace. <laughs> pretty, pretty solid, it seems like. I think the evidence is there. Well, so this is going to be CJ playing very safely. And you can't play, kind of you can't can play safely with this composition, though. They may be able to take a win out of this game because Spenu's going to make a mistake because they are a lot of rookie players. I think that's what CJ has to count on from now on. But this is this is the the alternate alternative side of mid Varus that we didn't see oh yesterday. Boy. Coco ulted, gets out of it with the cleanse right away, but there's that but pulverized. Nice flash. Oh, he gets Vivid under the turret, but Vivid manages to ult his way out of it. Yeah, I don't know about using that Varus ult on the Alistar. I suppose it is ult for ult. Oh, he got his flash, too, oh, so yeah, it yeah, was right. definitely a net win to use that. It's also flash for flash, I suppose, too. Yeah, but at that point, you might as well just fire it off right there. It's a very short cooldown yeah, on that ult. Is. Very, very short. Curiously short. Well, shy on the run right now, in danger of getting dived, but he's going to make it out. And this is going to give CJ an opportunity to go in onto Sassen here. Sassen in a lot of trouble, waiting. There's a pool. Can they get him? He popped that Hemo Plague as well, too. Ambition picks that kill off. Where did his pool go to right there is uh, the that real was question because he didn't have it. Yeah. 
during that engagement. And now CJ actually really pressuring their bottom side of the map. Space managing to get all the way to the tier two. Well, somehow Shy managed to draw people up into the top lane and that gave CJ a chance. Well, they to wanted get to take the turret. Presence. So they got the tower, the tier one in top for their trouble. So it's still a net win for Spenu. And now, oh, those flame choppers didn't set up fast enough. So Ambition actually making it through the choke point. He's a nimble Yeti. Just skipped right over them. All right, a lot of wards on the map right now. Good eyes on to Baron. Finally, they're swapping Sasan into the side lane. This is probably what they should have done some time ago. Hmm to help them set up a forceful split push because no one from CJ can really deal with this Vladimir at the moment. Well, they're trying to push this top lane now against Soul. Shine Ambition up there. It looks like they'll be able to get the turret. This Jinx is recalling a lot, actually. Well, I think this is kind of what CJ was looking for, you know? I think they are starting to kind of prey on the inexperience of Spenu right now. It's like Spenu's gonna get a second dragon, however, they already have it set up. But Soul just not having the wave clear right now to deal with this hard push at the top side. Has to use his ultimate just to clear that one out, but they are going to get a solo dragon. Sasin returning to the mid lane. Sasin could absolutely, they know there are four people top. He can stay bottom and keep pushing. Hmm. That's a mistake, he doesn't need to be there at all. He went down to help with the dragon and could have gone right back into the bottom side. Well, either way, it's second dragon for Spenu. I don't think CJ is going to be too concerned at that point about it. I mean, they, they got a turret in return, and it seems like turrets should be the priority, right? Because the more map control they can get, the better they can set up sieges. Yeah, unfortunately, they've already lost so much map control that the True. deep sieges, they are so vulnerable to flanks. And... Well, like you said, though, you got to do something. They really are wasting a lot of time with this many people in the mid lane also. The Vladimir in the mid is absolutely not necessary. But he's the mid laner. Well, this is job, man. Get out of my lane, this is my <laughs> farm. It's his lane, everything in it belongs to Vladimir. Yeah, especially since the jungler was on the bottom side taking that dragon, get some deep wards in when you know how many people are trying to siege your tier two and top side and then transition into a split push with Vlad on bottom. They're gonna try and do the same thing except top now, so a little bit delayed, but this might work. They have some nice zone already set up in the jungle. Hmm. Well, it's too bad Shy wasn't able to be more in the jungle there. He had a chance for some good equalizers with the kind of clumping of Spenu. Well, Varus isn't going to get more powerful than he is right now. Has the Muramana, has all the armor penetration he needs, has the cooldown boots. This is the peak of Varus in a game of League of Legends right now, given the current itemization. And no Frozen Heart on the top laner yet. They're actually just gonna go. Wow. They do not have to go for this Baron right now. That seems very brave, Ambition. I think CJ uh, space knows is what's up. Side. Oh yeah, Space is way out of position right now. Can CJ even fight this? The poking coming in from Varus may be a problem. Sasan taking a big damage. There's the equalizer. They're gonna turn around on this. CJ may have gotten a little bit too close. Shy in the middle of everything there. Mad Life trying to push people away. There's a kill on to Coco already. Good turnaround by Spenu, and without space there until the very end, there wasn't a lot that CJ could do. They prevented the Baron, but they gave up Coco in the process, and they may have to give up this mid lane turret too. Well, they stopped uh, the Baron, quite. and that is the most important thing. Now, they still have Consume and Sivir to take out minion waves, so Spenu, I think that they're not actually using their resources properly in order to close this game. They've been allowing CJ, in spite of the fact that they've been 4K gold ahead, to dictate the pace of the game by not using this Vladimir in the right places. Uh, when the Jinx is perfectly capable of clearing out minion waves with rockets and with the static shiv that she bought, obviously not even going for the Phantom Dancer, so there's even less of an excuse. Makes sense. And now they tried to force that Baron, couldn't quite get it, and the only thing they got in re return was a kill. So the turtling from CJ definitely having a result, and we've actually seen that gold gap close by a thousand simply because there's there's just been better farming, I think, from from CJ. They've caught up 
by being in the lanes. That makes sense. While as Spenu has been grouping too much. It seems like late game though, Spenu still has the stronger team. You know, yes. if it goes late, they're gonna Definitely. scale better. But again, you know, it's all about can Spenu play without errors, you know? Yes. Can this relatively rookie team play late game against an extremely veteran team like CJ? That's going to be tough, no matter what the gold score is right now. Yeah, and what the compositions are. Yeah. Spenu's still really wanting to take this Baron. Hmm. Going to clear out some wards right there. There's a large wave developing in bottom side. They can't ignore this unless they all in Baron, right? Okay, they are going to do it, I guess. All right, well, there's still a ward there, and CJ knows what's up. Now everyone is there, so can CJ fight it? Here comes the teleport for Spenu. They're going to turn around, and the poking is getting pretty serious from Coco right now. Mad Life going in, and there's a flash. Just advance goes on to Shy. Space actually in a pretty good position here, as is Coco. CJ turning this one around a little bit. There's a kill for Coco. They take out the top laner, Mad Life with a great heal there. Vivid comes in to try to make something happen. They are able to get the kill. Oh, never mind. Nuclear is playing Jinx. <laughs> so there's a double kill. Ambition, a lot of trouble now. That was so close. CJ nearly had that fight, but I think the lead combined with the, the state that this Jinx is in was enough for Spenu to take it. That was such a risky Baron. And look at the minions at the bottom side as well. Yeah. Massive wave. They could lose a tier two right here if they don't do anything. Sasin gets the recall to go deal with it, but they saw that minion wave, I think, developing, and they thought they had to all in at the Baron. If we look at what happens right now, uh, Shy gets caught by the Twisted Advance, so he's not in the front. Another not great equalizer from Shy in this game. And then the resets begin as the AOE starts to flood in from the Vladimir. Space gets taken down. Nuclear can't quite catch up to Shy. Hmm. Well, that was a pretty valiant effort by CJ, but in a straight up 5v5 team fight, that may be about as close as they're going to get, you know? At this point. Well, you'd have to believe that it's not going to get a whole lot closer if the Baron can deal that much damage to Spenu. Yeah. There would have to be a situation where they are poked even more than they were from that Baron. And now that there are two frozen hearts done, that seems pretty unlikely. Also, the Hourglass finished onto Sasin, so just armor across the board. Right. And, and uh, two Righteous Glories, that's huge. Third Dragon taken by Spenu as well, too. So just adding to that lead, their 4K gold ahead with two dragons ahead. Interestingly enough, down a turret. But CJ's comp is kind of made to kill turrets. But they're not made to play super late game. Oh, several to activate it. CJ thinks they have an opportunity. Chains on to catch, and they will be able to get him. A kill for space. Nice equalizer slows down Vivid a little bit. CJ at least able to use that to disengage for now. Can they take a Baron off this, though, is the question. Mm. They're trying to just clear out the wards. If they can bait it and get maybe a little bit more poke in, it might be possible. But Spenu backing off pretty decisively. It looks like they're just going to have to be happy with a single kill and trying to turtle out this game even more. Well, if they can have a situation like that where they kill two people, then that's a Baron, you know, then that's objectives. So CJ kind of demonstrating that they can still take advantage of some mispositioning from Spenu. That's going to be their key back in this game. Well, Nuclear is getting so strong, though, and he hasn't yeah. even had to build that last Whisper yet. There's no point because no one on CJ has any armor. Shy itemized for magic resist in this game because of his lane and the fact that there is a Vlad in the mid lane as well as the AP coming out of the jungler. So he isn't really prepared to deal with what Nuclear is throwing at him. And we see these massive crits, and the Bloodthirst are the perfect item here just to give him that overshield. Only, I, the only thing that's on the other team is really the Glacial Shroud, and that is going to do almost nothing against this Jinx. Yep, CJ certainly behind. They have to hope that Spenu makes a mistake. That's really all there is to it at this point. They can't siege, they can't really fight 5v5. They need to just count on that veteran status. 
Unless Shy has some sort of monster play, but Shy without the Zonia's Hourglass is just going to melt. Yeah. Yeah, everyone's pretty far behind on CJ at the moment. I mean, the Varus just isn't doing that much damage anymore. No. Now, this is why I'm not a big fan of mid lane Varus, Doha. Yeah, he does kind of drop off a bit. You need a good mid game, otherwise you're not going to get a lot done. He either looks spectacular or he just falls straight on his face. Yeah, I mean, if you think about Faker's game yesterday, it was a situation where they got that lead, right? And Faker was able to get ahead of the armor on the other team and do tons of damage. But at this point, you don't want to be the Varus that's playing catch up to the armor on the other team. Yeah, SK Telecom was also not doing great in the early game, but they got handed a very favorable opportunity because Najin decided to contest a dragon that they really shouldn't have. Right. Instead, they should be doing what Sven is doing and just looking to get into the late game, have a couple of righteous glories, and really just pressure the back line. And that's what they're doing, and they've got so much tankiness right now. Vlad, of course, gets super tanky in the late game as well. His passive, the more AP he stacks, the more HP he gets also. It makes sense. Uh, just some ward clearing right now. There we go. Last ward down now. So CJ's going to have to start taking some risks. They should be going for this Baron, maybe. Maybe. We'll see. Coco just sitting back there. He's got more or less unlimited mana at this point. He can throw those Qs out all day. Do they see that ward behind the Baron, though? They finally may have snuck one in that that pink ward doesn't have vision of. Yeah, it doesn't look like it. Probably right on the edge. Up. Uh, activating the Baron right there. Gets <laughs> a hit on the nuclear, but not going to do a whole lot. They'll try and push up into the mid lane. They're just clearing over and over again. And yep. they may just wait for this fourth dragon. Everyone just going to recall. Pick up some more items. There's the startings of the last whisper on the nuclear. See pretty much everybody behind except for Shy in this game. You know, at least CJ having some pretty good wave uh, wave clear. So while they can't really siege, it's hard for Sonic Boom to do it too. Until they run over them with the Baron, which is just the inevitable conclusion of waiting this long in the game if they don't make a mistake. Yeah, you'd imagine. And here we go. Now. Spenu might be going for that. They really should just go for the dragon and threaten five dragon stacks as well. Oh, they found that ward. I guess that was visible. It might have just been behind the Baron model. Well, CJ moving a little bit down the mid lane here. Yeah, they're trying to do what they can, but it's pretty difficult to. Do you think Spenu would want to trade a Baron for a second dragon for CJ? I probably. don't think they have to make a decision. Probably could. They have a Jinx who can solo that dragon right now. While the rest of them pressure Baron, which is what they should be doing. The rest of them, the rest of Spenu should just be pushing the mid wave and threatening Baron while Jinx just stands in the pit and solos it hmm. with the Bloodthirster. There's no way all of them are needed to do this dragon. And they don't want to give up that counter Baron like you're saying, so. Yeah. Oh, knock up on the catch. They may have caught him again. That was a pretty big whirlwind. And CJ does have the speed shrine here, too. The poke coming in for Coco. They're doing that dragon. Ambition going deep. Pops that absolute zero. Gets knocked out of it, though. Equalizer comes down, and they need to kite this very careful if they want to win the fight. Vivid having to flash away. Flame Chomper's not catching anybody, though. And here we go. Now Soul and Vivid coming back in. They lock up Mad Life and Shy for just a moment, but the poke really helping out CJ now. They're gonna turn this dragon. Coco snipes out Sassen. They get the dragon as well. And that is the kind of fight that CJ needs to do. Just slow, methodical, poking out Spenu. Spenu did not decide whether they wanted to engage that fight or to stay doing the dragon. True, and Sassen now... stayed there and lost all of his HP to poke and dragon, just trying to stick to the objective. And now, 
Well, they now, may be uh, able to get the down. Dragon and the Baron, so a huge turnaround from CJ. Well, this is what we've been talking about the entire time. CJ content to wait it out because they know there's such a good chance that Spenu, this kind of rookie team, is going to make a big error, and, and it happened. Yeah, they definitely made a huge error right there, not committing to leaving the the Dragon in order to get that fight. Because if we take a look at this right here, watch Sasen tanking the Dragon. I mean, that Equalizer isn't great, but they're just sitting there, and the chain of corruption goes down, and Sasen just ha hasn't moved alongside Catch for that entire fight so far. They committed way too hard from the Dragon when they have a team fight advantage at this stage. The one thing they couldn't do was stand there and allow themselves to be poked down and crowd control. Well, at the very least, Sasen should not have been the one taking that Dragon. Well, he should have just turned with the rest of his team. Yeah. No need to take that Dragon immediately. You can absolutely go ahead and take that fight, but... Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. CJ may be in trouble here. Coco's down the bot lane. Spenu has an opportunity. Here we go. Ambition trying to flee. They pop the Sivir ultimate to escape, but they might have to give up their jungler. Nope, Ambition's actually just fine. Catch decides not to use his ultimate right yeah, there. Yeah, that was a bit surprising. Huh. I felt like they could have had a pretty good fight. But again, I mean, just not willing to commit. And now Ambition, wow, just going really deep. Having to burn his flash to get out. They get the blue buff because of it, though. Huh. Not sure if that was really worthwhile. Yeah, I don't know. The mid laner doesn't need the blue buff in this situation. Vlad has plenty of CDR already. Right. Well, Coco's going to put his bow on his backpack. Or his bow turns into a backpack. Wow. How utilitarian. Right. But it's not a good backpack because you can't put anything in it. It's just a bow. It's just folded up. Yeah, but you can kill people with your backpack. I suppose, that's true. When have you been able to say that? Uh, once, a long time ago. But <laughs> the government told me not to talk about that. Uh-oh. It was part of your plea bargain. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> the secret's out now. <laughs> and that's why Doe is in Korea. There you go. He's actually in exile. It's a witness protection program. <laughs> nope, in exile. I'm in exile. <laughs> Banished from my native land. <laughs> All right, CJ getting to Siege like they've wanted to do all game long. Finally with that Baron, they're getting the opportunity. Catch comes over the wall, Space has to run away. He's just gonna kill the Raptors, I guess. Wow, so spent in this game, we've seen some of their bright spots, just like we saw against SK Telecom where yeah. They seem to be able to sort of hang with the big boys for a while, but then their shot calling just falls apart in the late game, and they're not all on the same page. And against some of these highly organized squads, it's just a matter of playing chance time and time again and being patient because CJ just had to wait for them to continue to try and do dragons, and then eventually they would make a mistake, and CJ would be able to capitalize on yep. it with better ideas of how to win this game and to play out their strategy. And CJ with the gold lead for the first time in a long time this game. It's a small one, but it's a lead. Yeah, doubling the turrets. Less than half the kills, though. Yeah, this is uh, now a rough situation for Spenu. I mean, they're faced with the this very premier siege composition. Baron buff has worn off at the very least. Yeah. But they're no longer threatening the five stacks. Now it's obviously still very possible for Spenny to win this game, but they don't have the gold lead anymore that was really helping them out, even if they still have the superior late game composition. Well, we know that in like a straight up fight that Spenu gets to engage on, they're gonna have the edge. You know, yeah. if they can get onto Varus, if they can get onto Sivir, they can win a fight pretty easily. But CJ seems to have kind of stabilized in terms of how they want to approach fights in this game. And Spenu is uh, starting to look a little bit frantic. Well, and Spenu just needs to get some deep wards in and then TP on them. That's what has to happen. Just use home guard TP to destroy the Varus immediately with the Malkai, and they, we haven't seen no TP flanks this game yet. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, perhaps something that they're just not coordinated, coordinated enough to pull off. They've got wards behind CJ right now. 
Yeah, they should absolutely use it on this dragon setup. They should force the fight they go. want. Mad Life, that's really smart of him to yeah. put that pink ward back there and make sure that there aren't so many options. Really a good ward. Oh, there's a ping. Mad Life finding another ward. Yep, taking that out. So and CJ see, knowing CJ, what the danger is. Yeah, they absolutely yep. know what the danger is. Now they've got the setup they need, denying vision so they can just hide in their own jungle and poke. They've almost got all those wards done. All right, Dragon's basically back up right now. So now the poke begins. So CJ knows that this speed shrine. Spamene was not set up for this. Yeah, not so much. Oh, there you wow, go. Nice Just take half your HP catch. right there. Yeah. Catch very slowed. Wow. Coco nearly hitting him again. And it looks like Dragon number three is going to CJ as well. Yep. CJ just plain using that veteran status to outplay Spenu Spenu at this point. Just wasn't even there for yeah. the start of that dragon. And when they try and filter through a choke late, well, those Varus arrows are going to do a hell of a lot of work. Yeah. You have to be on top of your game and get there to set up early so that you can be spread out in the river so that he just wastes a bunch of arrows hitting one or no people. Pretty much. Uh, oh. Another <laughs> mob Malmordius actually for Coco right now, very worried about that magic damage. And then he's got the BF sword also. No Ghost Blade yet, which is what we saw in Fager. Space goes ahead and picks up a QSS. That little bit of survivability. Nuclear, on the other hand, does want a Banshee's Veil. Well, with Space on having that QSS and Varus having Cleanse, it's going to be kind of tough for uh, Catch to get a good ultimate off at this point, too. And that's just going to be something even more in CJ's favor. Yeah, it's problematic. You have to hope that maybe they burn it on a Twisted Advance or something like that. But you're yeah, right. Could be. Spender doesn't have a whole ton of wave clear, or I, I mean a whole ton of crowd control effects, and those are going to be pretty much neutralized by the summoner and the QSS. So... Ambition, just dropping some wards down. And CJ's just playing this out so patiently. Yeah. Well, they're proving that they are the more, the team with more poise, they are the more patient team. Yep, certainly looking much more coordinated here in the very late stages of the second game. And now moving up this mid lane, there are wards behind them, so they still need to be worried a bit about the flanks. Well, it's not like Spenu has been back at base ever setting it up. Oh, they may do it now. They're doing it. Maybe. They're going to do it. Ping's going down. CJ immediately backing off, though. It's first time in 45 minutes they have attempted this. Well, it's too late now. They had a chance, but they didn't pull the trigger on it. I think they should have tried. Yeah, I mean, they can win a straight up fight. If they can take out Coco, that's it, you know? Uh, they they didn't have any other, they may have been scared just because the Sivir enga engage or the Sivir uh, ultimate may have gotten CJ out. That's one of the strengths yeah, of CJ's true. composition though, is they have disengage tools like Monsoon and on the hunt just to get out. And not to mention, if they see the teleport getting in, you know, Coco can just hit him with the Chains of Corruption as soon as he pops out, too. Yeah. Yeah, they can pretty reasonably burst him down, maybe. Well, I guess we're just going to wait for the next dragon, I though. guess so, yeah. Well, now, you know, you have to know... Spenu realizes that CJ is just waiting for them to make mistakes. So Spenu's answer is to just not do anything. Well, they have to just keep control over the pit, though. They're losing ground slowly with their ward line. Yeah. Shy waiting for a good equalizer here. And is CJ actually going to try to bait this Baron? I feel like this is a bit risky if they do. No, in fact, this is a poor decision from CJ. Yeah, this is overly well, risky. Teleport coming in. Okay, they need to back off immediately. They just needed to yeah, protect their tier two. That's oh. all, the only reason they started that. Okay, alt used, and they don't even bother to use a cleanse or anything. Ambition with a pretty good zoning. Can they poke? Soul getting poked a little bit by Coco. There's a knockup into Ambition space. A little bit awkwardly positioned here. Mad Life, there we go. The flash ahead. Zeus advance onto Shy. Mad Life backing away. Shy getting out as well. Coco still okay. Hemoplague did a lot of damage, though. Coco manages to get the kill on to catch. And CJ taking that fight for now. Now, Nuclear hasn't Shy been has touched TP. yet. 
Yeah, Shy can come back fairly soon. Now CJ going for this Baron. Man, again, this seems so risky with a full health Jinx still. Shy's coming in. Oh boy, yep. Shy is trying to come in. There's a knockup anyway. Ambition getting very low. Space in the pit with Vivid. Vivid on his own. Baron gets taken out by CJ. Shy, they advance onto him. Nuclear taken down. Double kill for Shy. And now there goes Sasin. CJ gets the ace. And with death timers like that, you've got to imagine that's going to be close to the end of the game, if not the end of the game. Yeah, especially since it's only going to be their jungler coming back up soon. So that yeah. is pretty much an Should invitation to go ahead and pile on through straight onto the Nexus. And man, Spenu did a good job of getting the lead in this game, but yeah. they made a lot of mistakes in terms of closing and how to apply pressure. And eventually CJ was able to catch them out. That's right. So in the end, it will be a 2-0 for CJ Antis. Spenu look a little bit better, but CJ still proving they are the veteran team. They are the better team and they go home with the 2-0. Well, both teams a little bit frustrating here. I mean, CJ took that very poor early dragon fight to dig themselves into a hole. Yeah. And Spenu looked like they were doing the right things to get back on track and to start really taking out turrets. But, I mean, Spenu never even got a tier two in that game, despite having a Vladimir who is very ahead, who is capable of split pushing. Yeah. And they overcommitted to certain objectives, uh, just poor late game objective control couldn't decide whether they wanted to finish the dragon or actually turn in that fight that uh, CJ managed to poke them down in. So Spenu has some stuff to work on, but their early game at least seems relatively solid.